Hey YouTube, Land Tag Hunters there doing another action figure review. Now this is something I generally, even though I'm a huge fan of the franchise, I generally don't tend to do too many videos on. Um, mainly because there's some other really great reviewers out there who review the vintage versions of these. As in uh, Hooded Commander 788 and Form uh, 2187. I could be butchering his name. Um, and then there's uh, G.I. Joe Berg as well. And even Retro Blasting does some G.I. Joe reviews. But uh, this is one I picked up. I was excited to pick up. I had the original as a kid. Now, I don't have much left of the original version. And I'll get into that in a little bit. But what this is, is a modern uh, G.I. Joe Club Edition. Now, unfortunately, the only way to get this guy in nowadays even at the time of this recording is on the secondary market and the price can be fairly substantial i managed to look out on this guy i got him for a good bit cheaper than what he normally goes for um i got him pretty much for what he would originally cost uh when they were first released but what this is is the gi joe figure subscription service which was run by the gi joe club uh it's, I think it was released in 2016, or I want to say 2016, 17, just before they started finishing off the line and before the club went out of business. This is their homage or their version of Stalker version 2 um, as part of, uh, he was originally released in 1989, I believe. And his uh, version 2 figure ran up to 1991, but... Um, I always loved the original version of this figure. I had, as I said, I had it as a kid. Uh, but I was hoping they would release a version of this guy in the regular G.I. Joe lineup. You know, the mass release one, but they never did. They only did it as part of the figure subscription service. So he doesn't really re uh, use new parts. He reuses a lot of um, existing modern figure parts like the arms i believe started off uh life as snow jobs uh it was definitely arctic figure uh arms the legs i believe came with one of the versions of duke um i think they were also used for the gi joe or for the uh green shirt or the gi joe trooper because they have that weird um angled leg piece for the um i think it was the retaliation line or it's the line around that. But they have like a really weird boot cut on this. Now, unfortunately, as I said, I don't have the original figure that this guy goes with. But he does have all the standard articulation uh, of a standard G.I. Joe from this era. So ball, uh, ball jointed arms. Now, this is similar construction of how the new 2020 G.I. Joe retro line is being designed. Uh, with some slightly different articulation points in the retro line. Uh, in the sense of, instead of, some of the figures don't have just a, a wrist swivel. They have a hinge joint on the uh, wrist. But they have pretty much all the same articulation. This, he does have an accessory uh, for his head, which is a removable beanie cap. Uh, I believe this was first introduced on one of the other club versions. I know the, but it wasn't a beanie cap. It was actually a beret. I know his Tiger Force version uh, from the G.I. Joe Con set has a removable beret, removable beret, but not a beanie cap. I think the beanie cap was off another figure and they kind of just, as I said, swapped it around. But his original figure look was pretty much on par with this, with the light lime green with brown camo the arctic top uh he's known as um v2 version of stalker or tundra arctic tundra version which is why he has the green kind of more non you know complete arctic look to him what's nice is the undershirt as well he underneath this isn't the same lime green as the legs it's actually slightly different i'm not sure if you can see it on this but it's actually slightly paler and it still has the green running through it or sorry the brown camo running through it unfortunately i don't want to take off the um the web gear because it is a bit tricky to do so but he does have a great head sculpt this head sculpt has been used a few times mostly for club versions of the figure 
I think it was used for one of the standard um, release figures, the standard, um, I think I want to say the 50th version, but I could be wrong. It might have only been available as part of the G.I. Joe, uh, Joe Con and the club's uh, sets of figures. His belt piece actually comes from Roadblock, the movie one, the retaliation one, because they had these little bits on the side that you could clip on the uh, thing, that, uh, the gimmick that he had, which was these kind of grips that would clip onto these sections. And basically, he had different uh, jacket that would house different blades and gun parts and stuff like that, and you just clipped them into it. Now, unfortunately, I don't have that figured to hand, but back to the articulation. As I said, standard ball joint, so the arms can go up this much, rotate all the way around, do a 90 degree bend in the elbow with a swivel, swivel in the wrist. He has a ball joint in the upper waist, which is quite, or the, in the chest, which is really good. Nothing in the waist. His legs can do splits that much, can kick forward that much, do double knee joint and as you saw on the uh, earlier he has that weird ankle joint with the rocker um, as I said I believe these legs the now I'm not sure if the upper leg but I know the lower legs were used on the um, the G.I. Joe uh, green shirt figure or the G.I. Joe trooper I think it was called as part of retaliation his other accessories include a oar a submachine gun I think it was called I know unfortunately I didn't get this guy carded and I don't have his file card so he also comes with a white uh, knife which is what the original one came with I believe it's a pretty much a on par mold of the original one because it has this little indent on it as well as is his gun it's a replica of the original um, which was unique to him as well which is great uh, the club didn't just cheap out and repaint one of the existing gun molds and just call it a day. And the main PS of the resistance with this guy is he comes with this big, large kayak. Now, his original one came in white as well, with the exception of this G.I. Joe logo on the back. It didn't actually have that. It was just pure white. And it's a three-part kayak. So you have this piece that connects up here. And supposed to go this way the rib part is supposed to go to the base and you have this kind of detailing it looks like circuitry detailing on it then you have another piece that fits i think it fits this way it could be wrong it could fit this way i'm not too sure but it's like a little pontoon piece for it now i do believe the original one of these floated i'm not too sure on this one i haven't tried it and i don't have anything near me to try it with and it came with this awesome brown uh, machine gun that would plug in here to the section here now the one thing I will say about the club version that he didn't come with but it's one uh, it's the reason why I wanted to do this review is he did come with, with the original one did come with one other accessory that the club version they seem to have omitted from the club version I'm not too sure why uh, he also came with a white uh, base which I not sure where I put it, uh, with his name tag on it. But the thing that he came with is this. Uh, you can see the age, it has age. It's not as bright white as his jacket. That is because this is off the original one and it is a really cool mask. And the cool thing about this is it will still fit, even with the beanie hat, this club version of the figure, which is a really nice thing. And if I gear him up, and just give him his machine gun and his knife, he's ready to take on some cobras. And one other thing I do have, which is off his original one. Now, just pop this off. Is I do have his original version of the gun that went on his thing, and you can see that it looks like they took a mold off this to recreate it because the lines aren't as sharp on the club version as they are i'm not sure if it's picking it up on this but you can see the lines on the club version are a bit more muted and the detailing is a bit more softer than on the original one and what's cool is the original one 
will still fit the pontoon. So for those people out there who still have parts to the original version of this stalker and want to get a modern update for it, you're in luck. So you can actually use these some of his original weaponry with it. And then just to show him sitting in his boat, you can store the knife in here. You can put him into the seat. Now you can have him sit, uh, seated in such a way that he's holding the gun. He's going to be a little bit awkward to get in, isn't he? Bear with me a moment. It does take a little bit of maneuvering. So you can have him holding his gun and you can have him holding the oar. Uh, which does want to fall out of his hand for some reason. You just get the oar in his hand so you can have him holding the oar and all geared up. You could possibly store the gun in down the side beside him as well and have him holding the heavy machine gun. In fact, if I remember correctly, on the cover of the box art, he's actually holding the machine gun with two hands. It doesn't actually show him with the oar, but you can possibly, if I just move this, possibly set this into one of the yeah into one of the spots behind him. Still have him holding the oar, and have him holding the machine gun as well at the same time. So, you know, you can gear him up with all his gear, which is pretty sweet. And just take him back out of his box, or out of his boat. Just leave that there. He does have two peg holes on the bottom of his feet. Just stand them up. And just bring in one of the more traditional 25th, or sorry, this is the 50th anniversary version of Destro, which is getting a re-release soon enough as part of wave three i think they've started showing up in some stores at the time of this recording in the states he has slightly different deco but it's pretty much the same figure and you can see i just bring in the old tape measure that um stalker here stands around four inches and this is a little taller as he should be so there you go guys i hope you enjoyed this video review for stalker version two from the club i know it's a it's a really hard figure to get, so it's not something as common, but you might enjoy watching this video. So, as I said, I generally don't review G.I. Joe figures, but I wanted to do this guy because I still had some of his original vintage V1, well, I wouldn't say V1, but V2 parts. So I hope you enjoyed this video, and please feel free to like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. Cheers, guys.